lost. But then there was the first fruits. And so somehow, according to the Apostle Paul, the rapture is probably tied into one of the seven feasts. Now some people say, well, it's got to be Pentecost, or it's got to be Passover. Some people think it's a spring feast. Other people say, no, it's definitely, the rapture's got to be on the Feast of, Tab uh, of Trumpets, the Feast of Trumpets. And that could be. It could be that the last trump is indeed a reference to the last trump of a feast. Trumpet blow. All right, another uh, thing is Revelation 12. <clears throat> now here's something that uh, some Christians are debating, and I find that interesting. If you're a Bible believer, you just go by what the Bible says, and you believe it. Well, Revelation chapter 12, verse 1 through 3, the Apostle John tells us something. And what book is this? It's the book of Revelation, which is a book that Jesus said was given to tell us things that will shortly come to pass. So the book of Revelation is a book of prophecy to tell us about things that are coming to pass in the future. And it's the revelation of Jesus to John for us today. Now, the book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 1 through 3, John tells us something that he saw in heaven. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars, and she being with child, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. Now, I'm not going to read the rest of this. I don't have time to get into this. But there is something that took place on September 23rd, <clears throat> 2017. And a lot of people say, oh, it was nothing. Many Christians don't even know what happened. <laughs> but in the history of the world, the stars never look like this, but all of a sudden on, on September 23rd, 2017, somebody said, hey, look up in the heavens at the constellation Virgo, which is a woman. And look what it says there about her how she's clothed with the sun and had the moon on her feet and she has these 12 stars and, and it all lines up with the constellation Virgo all exactly as described here. So some people have connected the dots and said well that's that. So Revelation 12 is, is, is a marker in history in which God is saying if you look up at the stars and see them and you want to know the time periods and you want to know the times and the seasons I'm marking that there's a future event that's going to take place in about 2,000 years that, that you watch that day and then you realize hey now get ready God is saying I'm going to go do something for Israel now a lot of people that claim to be Christians many of them so Revelation 12, that's not talking about the Virgo thing in the constellation. <laughs> okay, well, I guess you're just blind. I don't see how you can't look at the constellation Virgo and see all the 12 stars around her and everything and not say, well, wow, that looks exactly what, what he was explaining. I don't see how you can miss that. But if you want to miss it, you help yourself. You see, if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant still, the Bible says. There are a lot of people that want to be ignorant. And a lot of people say, we as Christians, we shouldn't be looking at the stars. Okay, you, you can believe that if you want. Matter of fact, some have ignoramiously, I don't know any other word to say it, ignoramiously have said, oh, looking at the stars, well, that's a, astrology. <laughs> Are you serious? Do you even read your Bible? I doubt it. Do you know there's a difference between astronomy and astrology? Astrology is evil. I am very much against astrology, which is looking at the stars and trying to use the stars to put forth a, a horoscope or some sort of uh, a, a divination for your personal life. And that is wrong. We don't look at the stars and then make our decisions in life based upon what we see in the stars. That would be evil. That would be wrong. That is astrology. Astronomy is studying the stars, looking at what's actually there, learning what the names are, and, and they're up there. How someone could say it's wrong to look up, I don't understand. David did. Psalm chapter 8 and verse 3, David said, When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, and the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained. Okay, so David was an astrologist because he looked up and considered the heavens? No. He was a king of Israel that loved to study, that loved to learn, and he studied and he looked and he looked up and he learned about the stars. And he says, well, that's cool. All right, what about Job? Job chapter 35 and verse 5. Look unto the heavens and see, and behold the clouds which are higher than thou. Here's a command from God 
for us to look up at the heavens. It must be okay for a Christian to look at the heavens then. There must be a difference between astrology and astronomy if the Bible tells us it's okay to look at the stars and to look up. Matter of fact, let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 51. I get so put out a lot of times by these people that claim to be Christians. And rather than looking at the Bible and looking at, hey, wow, look how close we are to Jesus' return, they just want to look at other Christians and try to nitpick and criticize and attack them. What a foolish thing to do, talking about other Christians, when we could be having a great Bible study and talking about the Lord. <laughs> That's what we should be doing. Isaiah chapter 51 and verse 6 says, Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look upon the earth beneath. For the heavens shall vanish away like smoke, and the earth shall wax old like a garment, and they that dwell therein shall die in like manner. But my salvation be, shall be forever, and my righteousness shall not be abolished. It says here, lift up your eyes to the heavens. The Bible says to look at the heavens. So, we do. Now, we don't have to base our doctrine upon what we see in the heavens, and that's not what I'm doing. I'm just thinking, wow, isn't it interesting? You read the Bible, and then you look at what happened on that day, and you go, wow, that sounds like what happened on that day. What does it mean? Well, that's the question. What are the stars for? Well, the Bible says God gave them for signs. Let's go to Genesis chapter 1. Why did God make the stars in heaven? Well, Genesis chapter 1 and verse 14. Very first book in the Bible. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. Let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. So God says in the very beginning of the Bible, I made the stars in the heavens for signs to be markers of the seasons. So it's the Bible says, Paul says, brethren, you're not ignorant of these things. You know, he says that uh, we're supposed to know the times and the seasons. Isn't it? So God gave these things in the heaven as markers for signs. Now, some people say, well, signs are for the Jews. Yes, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 22. So as a Christian, I'm not looking up at the heavens and, and expecting God to speak to me from them. But I do look at what the Bible says and who they're supposed to be speaking to. And as I read the Bible, I go, oh, okay. So God made those as, as signs for the seasons. And the people that look for signs more than anything else are the Jews. So, hey, Jew, if you're a Jew, look up at the heaven and tell me what you see. Well, if you're a Jew and you look up at the heaven, guess what you're supposed to be looking at? The signs. And if you're looking at the signs, guess what happened after September 23rd, 2017? The most amazing thing in the entire world happened for the Jewish nation. What was it? The Jews came back into their land in, in 1947 under a UN mandate that said they could. And in 1948, the Jews set up themselves a government, and that started the nation of Israel in 1948. Seventy years later... They celebrated 70 years as a nation in 2018. But they didn't have a capital. But in December 6th, December 6th, 2017, this guy named Trump stood up and he declared, Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. So the first time in almost 2,000 years, Israel not only had their nation back, they got a capital of Jerusalem back again. Now why is that a big deal? People say, oh, Robert Breaker, <gasps> big deal. It is a big deal. Because we have the Bible. And the Bible promises us that Jesus Christ will return to this earth someday and will set his throne in Jerusalem, in the house of David, and will sit on the throne where he will rule and reign for a thousand years. So Jesus will rule for one thousand years on the throne of David, and David's kingdom was, the capital of, of it was Jerusalem. But you say, oh, big coincidence, Robert Breaker, you're just not telling me anything important. <laughs> okay. Well, I just find it more than just coincidence that this thing took place and it was this sign 
And who are supposed to be looking for signs? The Jews, according to 1 Corinthians. So Jews, wake up and realize you are very close to the coming of your Messiah. He came once and you rejected him, so he's coming back again. He's going to send you some witnesses, though, first. So what is that sign pointing to? That very shortly God's going to go back to dealing with the nation of Israel. So there are many clues in the Bible. Let me show you another clue. This is an important, important clue. People say, no, where in the Bible does it give us the date of the rapture? But there's so many clues that point to when it'll be. And they all keep pointing to really soon, really soon. Let's go to Matthew chapter 24. Here's a clue from Jesus himself. Uh, Matthew chapter 24 and verse 34. Jesus is speaking to Israel. And he says, Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. So Matthew 24, 34 is a clue from Jesus about the generation. Now who is he talking to and what is he talking about? They came to him and asked him, what's going to be about the last days? Well, there's going to be a generation of Jews that live in the nation of Israel in the last days. Well, guess what? 1948, they started a nation again. There's people over there living in Israel that are Jews. And Jesus said, now this is going to be in the last days. And then he said, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. And you read chapter 24, and it's all about the tribulation period. Now, that raises the question. How long is a generation? How many years? Let's go back to Psalms chapter 90 and verse 10. In Psalms chapter 90 and verse 10, here we find out what the Bible looks at as the age of a generation. Psalms 90 verse 10 says the days of our years are three score years and ten. Now three score, well a score is twenty, so three score would be uh, sixty and 10, so 70, and if by reason of strength they shall be fourscore years, so it would be 80. Yet is their strength, labor, and sorrow, for it is soon cut off, and we fly away. <laughs> I think that's interesting, we fly away. But anyway, it says, so in the Bible, a generation is between 70 to 80 years. That's what God looks at as a generation according to the Bible. Alright, so... You take 1948, you add 70, you get 2018. If you add 80, you would get 2028. So somewhere between 2018 to 2028. Is that the end of the generation, 2028? Well, if so, you'd have to take away 7 for the tribulation. That'd be, what, 2021 rapture? <laughs> wow, if the rapture was in 2021, that's next year! <laughs> Wow, that means we must not be too far away from... All I'm doing is connecting the dots. I'm not setting a date, am I? I'm giving you a Bible study where we're looking at what the Bible says, we're looking at events, we're looking at the revelation. And it says, if you watch, you will know. And I'm watching, and I'm putting things together, and I'm reading the Bible, and I'm going, wow, it looks like we're going to be really close to the rapture of Christ. Could it be in 2020? I hope so. 